What has changed is that we now know the underlying science that links the brain and its mind with, with these digestive functions. Exploring the brain-body relationship, this time on UCLA Newsweek. Dr. Emron Meyer of the newly opened Gail and Gerald Oppenheimer Family Center for Neurobiology of Stress discusses the value of interdisciplinary science and improving care for gastrointestinal ailments. Well, we've known for a long time that there are links between the brain and the digestive system from everyday experience. We talk about our gut feelings. We, we get butterflies in the stomach when we're upset. Um, what has changed is that we now know the underlying science that links the brain and its mind with, with these digestive functions. The brain not only sends signals to the digestive system, but also receives a, an enormous amounts of information from the gastrointestinal tract. Changes in that stream of information that we get from inside of us almost certainly have a profound effect on, on the mind. So the uh, silo-based system that currently prevails really in every aspect of the, um, the healthcare and research enterprises, we have separate institutes at the NIH, we have separate departments. If you look at the brain, you will see how artificial um, this, this silo-based system really is because w there is now brain imaging studies in patients with chronic heart failure, with um, chronic pulmonary disease, in obesity, all of these studies show major um, structural and functional changes at the, at the brain level. Um, so in this study, what we're looking at is irritable bowel syndrome. And it's a common disorder. It affects women about two to one, more than men. And when most people think of it, they think about problems with the bowels, but really its predominant feature is pain or discomfort. And we know that even though it's a gut disorder, pain is sensed in the brain. So we focus on the brain and that's what we're studying. Even when people are resting, if they have irritable bowel syndrome, there are differences in this part of the brain here circled in yellow called the anterior insula. And so what people get from the anterior insula is their memory of how they might have felt the last time this happened or um, their fear about what might go on or how they're feeling that day and integrates it with the sense they get from their body. And we know that this area in IBS is different and probably leads to some of the symptoms that they have. When we study people who have IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, and look at the brain, sometimes what we'll do is induce pain in the gut so that we can see when pain occurs, how are they different than people without IBS. Those regions that we saw in all of these patients turn out to be in two basic networks that we're interested in. This one that is outlined over here is what we call the homeostatic afferent circuit. And that sounds confusing, but basically it's a circuitry that senses what goes on in the gut and the other organs within the body. This other circuit over here is called the emotional arousal circuit. And that's a little easier to understand. That is how we react emotionally to something that happens in our body. And these two areas seem to act differently in people who have IBS when they have pain. So one of the big hopes for the new center is that by having everybody in, in one location from the people that work in the basic sciences to those that work with uh, clinical patient populations, a, a, a tremendous amount of synergy will be generated from that. Um, I think that this will be unprecedented. By understanding first the mechanisms that we then tailor therapies such as cognitive behavioral therapy, um, such as mindfulness-based meditation and such as yoga uh, to alter these um, circuits that, that are sort of the controllers of these symptoms. So it's sort of rediscovering ancient techniques and uh, providing the, the neurobiological basis for them and thereby making them more acceptable to the mainstream um, healthcare system. For more on this and other stories, please visit newsroom.ucla.edu and follow us on Twitter at UCLA Broadcast.